Dragon is free from the International Space Station, the crew backing away the robotic arm. Official time, 4.49 a.m. Central Time, 5.49 a.m. Eastern. Space is the final frontier, but does the SpaceX Dragon capsule mark a new frontier for NASA's use of the private sector? We'll answer much more of those questions and show more of this fascinating video coming up. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the News Hub. I'm Kelsey Hubbard. And as you just saw, some great footage of the Dragon X capsule backing away from the International Space Station. And Andy Pastor is joining us this morning from Los Angeles with more on the story. Good morning, Andy. Thanks for getting up early for us. Good morning. So tell us a little bit about what we were just looking at. Um, pretty amazing feat when we think of the space program of this country, where it has been and where it is now. So this is the beginning of what looks to be about a six, a little bit more than a six-hour return trip for uh, Space, Tech, Space Exploration Technology Corps Dragon spacecraft. It's uh, now been uh, released from the space station. It's uh, 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 had two, um, two short burns to start uh, positioning itself for the descent. It'll have a much longer burn as it uh, gets uh, closer to the Earth, and then it'll streak down um, to a splashdown off the Southern California coast, about 500, actually 500 or so miles off the coast. And, of course, we've been following this as it uh, has taken this mission up to the space station. And it is the first privately built capsule. Uh, talk a little bit about this idea of the space program looking more to the private sector to run these missions. The, there's been a lot of talk about how historic this mission is, and that's very true because it is the first time that a privately built and operated spacecraft has docked. Uh, with the space station, but I think it's also quite a significant milestone from a different, maybe less publicized perspective, and that is that NASA is known for being in control of space flights. I mean, that's what they do. That's what they were created for. And in, but in this mission, what you had was really a dramatic reversal of roles. It was a private company that not only built and operated this vehicle, but actually problem solved uh, on the way on the way to the station. Um, and uh, NASA essentially allowed SpaceX engineers to figure out what had to be changed and adjusted before the docking in terms of some of the sensor systems. And it was NASA's final, it had to give its final approval before a docking could occur. But it was really the private company in the forefront making the decisions and NASA stepping into the background, allowing the engineering experts from the company to basically do their job. And that wasn't very easy for a lot of people, especially in the NASA program and even in Congress. There's been a lot of opposition to this, that perhaps it would be too risky, that safety standards wouldn't be uh, looked after as closely as, say, a NASA-backed program would. And also a lot of congressional critics oppose this because they worry about jobs in their home state. So where do we stand now in terms of the future of private sector uh, folks coming in and doing this versus uh, the opposition that it has faced? Well, certainly the debate hasn't ended, but this gives a big impetus to those who argue that uh, this is the way to go. Um, essentially, the proponents of, of commercial space ventures say the old-fashioned way that NASA operated was too expensive, took too long, and it's just not viable in the current budget and political environment. And so um, th those who look at this mission and say this is the wave of the future would say that because everything worked um, at this point, it looks like everything worked very well. Now, the capsule hasn't uh, splashed down in the Atlantic, but, I mean, the Pacific, I'm sorry. But if it does and, uh, and the return is successful uh, without any major hitches, I think it gives a tremendous boost to um, commercial space ventures. But the big question is, can NASA, when it comes to manned missions, take the same kind of approach, step into the background and basically tell companies, here's what we want you to accomplish, here's the, here are the things that we need from you, we'll let you decide how to get there. And tell us a little bit about what we can expect when the splashdown occurs later this morning. It'll be, um, it'll gently, it should, if everything works well, it'll gently touch down uh, at the end of three large parachutes. There'll be a um, number of vessels, including one with a big crane on board, waiting for it just outside the designated target area. And the hope is that they'll be able to get quickly to the capsule, pick it up, and then take it back, of course, for, um, for much uh, analysis.